Hello and welcome to my stamp studio. Today is our first Fun Fold Friday. Super excited. I love doing Fun Folds. I really do. And I thought, what a better way to share my love of them than to share it with all of you. So this is week one of our Fun Fold Friday class series. Um, we will be having these every the, uh, February 3rd. February 17th, March 3rd, and March 17th at 5 o'clock here at my stamp studio. Um, these will be posted up to YouTube. Oh, I'll try to do it tonight. It depends on what happens with the internet, you know. Um, but each week we'll do three to four fun folds that I'll share with you. And you can get this class and uh, you get your kits. And uh, you will also be getting a PDF tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions all the scoring, all the measurements, everything, all the supplies that I used uh, as part of your kit. Now, the PDF tutorials do get emailed to you, and I send these to you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to get my camera started. Again, <clears throat> for some reason, things just vanished out of thin air again. So my third card uh, just uh, disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. So we're going to start with that one and kind of do it from scratch. So you can see how I go from point A to point B, or point A to point B. It depends on which way you're looking at me. <laughs> so let's make sure I have my instructions here. I just need to make sure I'm seeing my live. So give me a moment to get that set. Um, all right. I'm not sure why I'm not seeing myself. If you're there, please say hi. Please let me know that I'm actually live. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing it anywhere here. Okay, let's try again. Maybe just Facebook is just being goofy here. Okay. I have a feeling I'm not live. Oh, there I am. Okay. Here we go. Okay. See myself. All right. There we go. So say hello. Let me know that you're here. Um, let me flip down to my desktop here. I just need to grab something for a second. And then we'll be ready to go. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so close your eyes if you get dizzy. All right, we should be looking at my desk now. Okay, so here we are. Fun Fold Friday, week one. Um, and again, I'll be doing, there's a series of four classes. And each of the four classes will do three to four fun folds. Today we have three. Hello, Diane, how are you this evening? Let's get started on our first one. So it's the Silly Goose. And what I'll be doing is your class kit will contain um, your three projects. And uh, I'll also have a sample for you of the card. So you're going to make one of each card. But I'm going to actually do a sample of you. A uh, sample of you. A sample for you. And in it, it will have all of your uh, measurements on the inside. So if you lose your tutorial, you're going to have a sample card uh, included in your kit. And this is my gift as part of the class. So let's get started on that first card. All right. So I have a piece of 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now this happens to be um, the host paper in our mini catalog. I believe that's the one. Let's see, it's Flowers and More, and it is in our mini catalog. Just grab that out. So you can actually get this for free when you host a workshop. What is hosting a workshop means? Well, you invite some friends over and you stamp. I can come and uh, join you and show you some projects and have you make, make and takes. Or you can just collect orders from you and your friends, put them in, and once you reach $150 in orders, then you get to pick out 10% for free. So you could get this awesome pack of paper. It's 48 uh, sheets. It's $18. So basically, if your orders total $180, you're getting that for free. Just saying. It's awesome. It's fun. You can make some really cute treats out of it. And, or you can place a single order. Totally up to you. There's no judging. I've done it before. Just saying. Okay, so we've got this really pretty paper. And we're going to be using our Silly Goose stamp set just because, I don't know, this set cracks me up. I just love it. And I want to grab a couple of things that I just didn't have. Because, like I said, my stuff just, I don't know, just disappeared on me. All right, so I need to grab 
some designer series paper here. I got my paper. I need to grab a piece of fresh curry cardstock. And I'm also going to grab, you know, I'm almost thinking that even a piece of sweet sorbet might be kind of cute. Let's just see. <clears throat> That's kind of cute together. I kind of like that. Yeah, well, I'm going to go with the crushed curry. That was my first one. And I just need a piece of basic white. And I need two pieces of basic white. Let me just grab another piece here. I said this one just happened to wander off on me. Oh, but I did find the fun fold that we did the other day out on Hump Day Lunch Break 5. And I was going to show you, and it disappeared <laughs> again. Oh, my goodness. I don't know why cards keep disappearing on me, but they do. They have this habit of just wandering away. I have no idea. I had it all out to show you. And... I've got so many cards on my desk right now. Oh, here it is. So this was the uh, fun fold that we actually did during Hump Day Lunch Break Live. So this was our Fiesta Taco, Taco Fiesta stamp set. We're going to be using this tonight, too. Isn't this fun? So this is a little bit of a fun fold, just with some designer series paper. But that's not the one we're doing here. Okay, so the one we're doing here, just need a couple more pieces of cardstock here. And here we go. One for my inside. <clears throat> okay, there we are. I don't have to even cut that piece. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to start with our card base, which I just moved. What did I do with it? <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay. And that is the wrong measurements. So I need to grab a different card base. Oh, my goodness. So we've got one right here. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut this at... Eight and a half by five and a half. Just kind of your normal standard card front here, your card base. But we're going to be scoring it just a little bit different. Now, a normal gatefold, I'm not going to say a normal gatefold. Gatefolds usually fold so they meet in the middle. This one's going to be a little different. So what we're going to do is we're going to be scoring at one and a quarter inch. So let me just turn this so you can see where I'm scoring. So I'm going to go to one and a quarter. Now I'm using this end of my trimmer. It's just easier for me to go to one and a quarter right here and make sure I move my cutting blade out of the way and I just have my scoring blade. So that's my one and a quarter and now I'm going to go turn this and move this to five and a quarter. All right, five and a quarter. There we go. That doesn't know. That's not right. Oh, please. I feel like this is not right. Oh no, that was. Okay, sorry. So I went from one and a quarter, now I'm going to five and a quarter. It was right. Okay, so here's my original fold score, and here's my second score. All right. I'm going to leave this here for just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and kind of fold in my sides. So this is what the gatefold is. It meets right there. And why? I don't have this measured correctly is what it is. Okay, well, we're going to try this again. So let me start over because I wrote my measurements down wrong. We need to actually score at one and a half, I believe. <sighs> so much for keeping my samples handy. Yeah, one and a half. All right. I will have the correct measurements on your project, though. So I'm going to score it at one and a half. And then five and a quarter. I was wondering why that was overlapping. It shouldn't overlap. It should just meet. <laughs> right, I do now. I did it wrong again. <clears throat> so one and a quarter on this side and five and a quarter on the other side. It should be. No. Okay. Hold, please, because I completely wrote my measurements down wrong. <laughs> oh, this should be three inches. Okay. So I'm doing one and a half on this side and three inches on my other side. I don't know why I got that so messed up. 
that. So we're just going to rescore that. Okay. So I got my three inch score right here. And I'm still wrong. What am I doing wrong here? No, that's. I may have to scrub this card and start over. <laughs> that's it. I'm just going to start over. We're going to start with a whole different color. <laughs> this is jinxing me, so we're going to start it all over. Okay, <clears throat> let's grab, we're going to grab Garden Green. <laughs> okay, let's pretend we never even started that first card because, oh my gosh, that was an epic failure. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut this at five and a half inches. So I've got my eight and a half by five and a half. Oh, good grief. My first score here is going to be at two and three quarters inches. All right. Make sure I got my trim out of the way. So here's my scoring blade, two and three quarters inches. And now I'm going to go to seven inches. So I'll go ahead and bring this out, slide this over to seven inches. And there we go. <clears throat> so two and three quarters and seven. I don't know why that was so hard to do in the first place. There we go. So now they meet together. That's what I wanted. <laughs> oh, and this doesn't even look like the right color, does it? It almost looks like I need shaded spruce. Oh, I know the other cards will go much smoother than this. I don't know why this one is just being a challenge. I, It's totally user error, too. Do you ever have those days? Because I seem to be having it. <laughs> I am normally not this bad. <laughs> But apparently, I must be today. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Shaded Spruce is the color I want to use with that. You can use any designer series paper that you have in coordinating cardstock. So, again, we're going at two and three quarters. We'll get the measurements down past this time. Two and three quarters and seven inches. All right, seven inches. There we go. All right. Now let's hope I can get my measurements right for my designer series paper. <laughs> Since I apparently had that wrong in the first place. Oh yeah, those are all wrong as well. <sighs> I think I put the wrong directions from a different card in here is what it what happened. Because even what it's saying is not, not quite right. Alright, so I need to cut a strip of my paper here that measures two and a half inches. The other side's kind of fun, too. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with this one because that's what I had planned. So this is going to be two and a half inches. Is that two and a half? Yeah, that's two and a half. Why does that just not seem right? Because I'm not at two and a half. That's why. All right, two and a half. Oh, and I just broke my nail. <laughs> Hmm, maybe I should think, <laughs> rethink at five o'clock on Friday. Oh boy. And then I'm going to cut it at four and a quarter. So two and a half by four and a quarter is my first one. And my second one will be one and a quarter by five and a quarter. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this at five and a quarter right away. And this is one and a quarter. So one and a quarter by five and a quarter, two and three quarters by five and a quarter. And then we have our pieces for our front. We'll just, there we go. Whew. Boy, that was difficult. <laughs> These aren't very difficult cards. I'm making it more difficult than it has to be. I'm so sorry, but all right. So all I'm going to do now is just adhere those right to the front of my card, my card base there. <sighs> all I can do is laugh, you know? Hi, Becky. How are you this weekend? I'm so glad it's a weekend. I'm telling you, it's been a pretty rough week. And I'm just opening up my card so I can just center this better. There we go. I just want to have it centered. Now, I don't have paper that's directional. If you do have directional paper, just make sure which way you're laying it down on your card base. Okay, and again, I'm just going to open this up so I can... 
Now, did you happen to see the post? There are some awesome new papers or awesome new products that um, Stampin' Up! has released a part of their celebration. And I'll go into that as soon as I get to my next card here, before my next card. Okay, so we have this. Now, on the inside, I need a piece that is four by five and a quarter, just like that. We're going to do some stamping on there, so I'm not going to um, actually put that one down yet. And then I need a second piece here just for my scrap so I can actually cut a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my stylus shape dies because that's the one I love to use most. And here we go. I'm going to pull out my larger circle here. Actually, I'm going to grab my layering circles because I thought of something else. I needed to have those for my scallop. Okay, layering circles, where are you? Okay, layering circles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my card front and I'm going to take my largest scallop one here and put it on the front and go, oh, yep, that will work. That will fit on here just fine. So we're going to make that one. And then I'm going to take a circle that goes right inside there. So that right there. Before I do this, though, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the die I'm choosing for my circle will actually fit my um, stamped image. So I'm going to be doing this image. Um, I'm not going to be using that sentiment. I'm going to be using a different sentiment. So I want that little goose with the frog. So put this over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and have this right here. And then I want to take a piece of this and I'll run that through. And the next thing I want to do is, okay, I've got my scallop, I've got my circle, I need my little banner. So now I just need to grab, oh, you know, we'll just make our own banner. We'll just freehand it. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our die cut machine. All right. I just need my bases here. Oh, look, I have another piece of cardstock. I like that. And we're going to do a little bit of coloring. Um, I'm not really focusing on the techniques for, um, you know, coloring tonight, so I'm just going to probably color it pretty quick. Some of the other projects I actually already have colored for us. Um, so you can just see that. You don't have to watch me color. On this one, you will. Sorry. All right. I'm going to run these through real quick here. Sorry, my camera bounces a little bit when I use this big guy on my table. All right. All right, so I've got my large scallop. I've got my circle. I'm going to go ahead and put those right there for now. Get rid of this. I'm going to grab my black memento ink, which is sitting right over here. And now I moved it. Okay, black memento ink, where did you go? There it is. And I need a block. And I haven't even mounted, I've been using this set, but I've only been using a couple of the images. This is actually the first time I'm using this image. So let me put my sticker on it. So this is the way I like to do my labels. So I take my sticker, I completely peel it off, I put it onto my block, and then I peel it apart. <clears throat> I take off that backing. That's what I meant by peeling it apart. Again, there's so much static in my house. Everything is sticking to me. It's been driving me crazy. All right, then I have my stamp here, and I'm going to just flip it to the back so the foam is facing up. I'm just going to look through my block and line this up. I do have to move it down so I can kind of get my head over it to line it up better. All right. Once I like where it is, I just push down on my block. And now it's stuck there. My label's mounted to my stamp. And I can go ahead and stamp. So let's get this inked up. Now I've been using my, bat, my pad quite a bit. So I may be... 
time to re-ink it. All right, so we're going to just put this right in the center. What I like about stamping on a circle is if I don't stamp it straight, I can just turn my circle. Okay, dog, you have to move. You can't, you can't be here. Oh, my dog today, I don't know what it is. It just must be something in the air. Maybe it's a full moon. I don't know. But he has been attached. He's got to be touching me all day today. It's driving me kind of crazy. All right. And we're going to say, hmm, sending a honky note of thanks. That's not it. I think we'll do, you got a friend in me is the one that we're going to um, stamp that with. <clears throat> just because it's got that little frog on there. So. I'm going to grab just a scrap piece of white here. Yeah, that should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and grab my sentiment. Okay, you got a friend of me is what I'm looking for. I know I didn't mount this one either. I'm just going to pick that one up though and stamp it. And I'm just going to stamp it in my memento black again. Stamp it right on right in the middle there. Probably about a good one inch strip is what you need. <clears throat> oh, I do have a one inch strip right here. Let's just grab that. And I'm giving myself a little bit of room so that I can uh, kind of do my banner end. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab in some blends here. And let's see, I'm just taking a look at the colors on here. So we're going to grab our little frog. And I want to do my little frog in shaded spruce. Oh, good grief. So I walk by my papers and they all kind of fall. And then I'm going to grab some balmy blue for my water. And the third thing I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab my daffodil here, which I actually have in my bin. Okay. Ooh, a little hat, a little crumb cake hat would look really cute. So we'll do that kind of like a little straw hat. Okay, there we go. Now we're set. Okay, so let's do our water down here. So I'm going to take my... Because we don't want to have our inner tube just floating in air like that. So now I'll take my light and I'm just going to color it in. Just like that. Just to give it a little bit of base. All right, let's take our light crumb cake here, and I'm going to use my chisel side. I'm going to zoom in a little bit while I'm coloring, just so you can see what I'm doing. And we'll go ahead and do our little hat. Is this crumb cake or ivory? Yeah, it's crumb cake. All right, so just do my hat. If I want it, I can come back in with my dark crumb cake here. And can I just do right here, just like that. Gonna give my hat a little depth there. Let's go ahead and take our woo. Wasn't expecting that to happen. Okay, so I put that back in. All right, we're gonna just take our shaded spruce here and color in our little frog. I'm not gonna do any blending on this one. It is kind of a small little image, so I really don't want to do any blending on it. All right, there we go. So I got my little frog colored. And let's get our inner tube colored here. And we'll do that in our daffodil here. I'm going to make sure it's daffodil. Again, I always open the brush end. I don't know what it is. No matter what, it always comes out the brush end. All right. I'm choosing a dark daffodil because it goes more with that crushed curry. And that we'll be using in just a moment. Okay. Just color this in. We'll get our little flowers colored on the hat. So we'll use our sweet sorbet to do that with. So 
So I'm going to again, I open the brush end. So I'm really just kind of dabbing on there. Because it is a small image, there's not a lot of color coloring that you do. Um, so if you're using your watercolor pencils, they'll work fine, as well as your markers, they'll work fine on this project. And then let's go ahead and take our dark... I should probably look at the label before I open these. Our dark shade spruce just for that. And now I'm going to bring in my <clears throat> dark sweet sorbet just to color in the little circles here. And I have a few different colors in my bin, so I just have to make sure I'm pulling in the right one. I've been doing a lot of coloring lately, so... <clears throat> That's cherry cobbler. Okay. It's got to be in here somewhere. I know it is. Because I used it just the other day. There it is. Okay. Dark sweet sorbet. Yep. And we're going to do our chisel end. And I'm just going to color in the polka dots in my inner tube. So really simple coloring with this one. There's not a lot that I had to do. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to take our... We're going to mount that right on there, just like that. And I'm just going to pull this off to the side for right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put dimensionals only on this part of my circle. And it looks like I had to grab another pack out. I've been going through quite a few lately. Yeah, all I've got is the small ones. Okay, we'll just use pieces of this. Alright, so turn it back this way. And I know that I'm only going to go on this part of my circle. Oh, where are the sides that I cut? Well, what happened there? It's not sticky. I think it pulled part of my paper off there when it did that. All right, there we go. Okay, flip it over and put this right in the front. Okay, <clears throat> so we have that. Let's go ahead and just take our bone folder here again and just give it a good press there. Now I've got a mat underneath my work surface here so I don't really have a flat really good flat surface what you can do in that case is just take a piece of cardboard right on your tabletop and you because anytime you're doing a fun fold you really want to make sure that where you where you've scored um, actually has some really good burnished folds that's really key to all fun folds all right so here we go there's that You've got a friend in me, and we're just going to go ahead and make a little banner here. I don't need it that big, so let's trim that off. And I'm just eyeballing it. And same on this side. Get rid of those little pieces out of the way. We're going to go ahead and grab <clears throat> a couple more of our dimensionals. Okay, I'm just using the scraps I have there. And you've got a friend in me. Thought that was just kind of cute because of the. I need to put one more dimension on here, because I'm going kind of going over an area that is already popped up. I need to make sure that this other side is popped up well enough. So I just put double dimensional there, 
And then I'm going to put this in the bottom part here. Okay. Jeez, I feel like I'm trying to tie a bow here. All right. So you got a friend of me. Really, again, this was not that hard of a card to make. <laughs> it's just two simple scores. I just made it really difficult. Okay, so now on the inside, we just need a little something, something. So we'll go ahead um, and send, I'm here for you. And I think we'll just stamp our little... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to oh, take my little glue. Oh, he's got a little party hat. I don't want that. I'm just going to use the same glue. Oh, what would be really cute. Hold on. Just thought of something even better for the inside of this card. So we've got an adorable, adorable little frog as a hostess stamp set. Isn't that cute? Isn't it cute? So we're going to stamp our little frog on the inside. <laughs> he's darn cute. Put him right there. We'll grab our black memento ink here. Stamp him in the corner. And then our sentiment here, which is, what does that say? Right, right here. It says, uh, I'm here for you. In my block. I am going to just stamp it right over here on the side. A little different than what I normally do. So normally, you know, you stamp your sentiment in the middle. I decided to just do something a little different there. And we'll color that in and then we'll just put it on the inside of our card and we'll be done with this one. Thank goodness, right? We'll get to the other more organized ones. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in my dark shaded spruce here. And I'm really going to just color the bottom of him, kind of part of his legs. His little back legs here. Okay. And I'll add just a little bit more definition here. So now when I color them in with the light, we'll have a little bit of difference here. Okay, that should be good. And then I'm just going to use the brush out of my light here and just kind of blend that all together. All right. Now, my marker here has been used quite a bit, so my <clears throat> end is not... Oh, good grief. I think I need a new one. I don't know why that's doing that. This seems to be the only one that I've had that happen to. I don't know why. I must have done something to it. All right. Okay. So, you're probably wondering, how in the world does she get all these different things? Well, you know what? Being a demonstrator gives me those extra little perks where I've got a discount every time I shop. And a lot of these items I get to pre-order so that I don't have to buy them all within the same month. So, I pre-order some things and when I collect orders and put them in... I'm just going to color this a little bit better. I can put my own workshop order and then I get the hostess benefits. And usually what it is, is I get them so that I can bring all of you different ideas. That's really what I use it for. All right, we're going to go ahead and adhere this on the inside of our card. And we'll get going to the next card because I can't believe how long it took for this one. This should have been a five minute card. Okay. So there we go. There's a little frog. Okay. That's our gatefold card. Let's put the little frog away and we're going to move 
these two stamp sets off our table because we won't use them again. All right. Oh, what's this? A little note to sell. All right, let's go to the next card. Okay, so now it's our Taco Fiesta card. I'm going to show you my sample, and then we'll get to making it. So here is a sample card, just like that. We can put a little bit of ribbon on there if we want. I just uh, didn't do that before the video. So that this is the card that we're going to make. It's super easy. It looks like it might be hard, but really it's not. It really isn't. So <clears throat> the first thing we have here is a piece of cardstock. This happens to be crushed curry again. This measures 11 inches by four and a quarter. What I want to do is I want to score this at two and one quarter inch and then five and a half inch. So let me put it this way. So I've got my two and a quarter. Oh, I almost cut it. So two and a quarter. I lied. Again, I lied to you. It's two and one eighth is really what I want. Two and one eighth. So two and one eighth and five and a half. Two and one eighth, five and a half. And my directions are written right, right there, right over there. I don't know why I can't read. All right. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do, I'm not too worried that I accidentally did that. I'm going to measure and put just a little tick mark with my pencil here at um, two and one eighth. So I'm just going to put that. Down. You know what? I'll just grab a ruler. It's too hard for me to show you with that trimmer. I'll need my trimmer again, so we're going to just leave it off to the side. But I'm going to go ahead and measure two and one eighth and put a little tick mark there. So right there is my two and one eighth. I'm going to come back and I'll erase that. Actually, I don't even have to do that. It'll be covered. Now I'm going to bring my trimmer in. And what I want to do is I want to have my score line really burnished here so I can see it clearly. All right. So that's my first score. I'm going to take my trimmer and I'm going to cut from this mark to my score line. So I'm just going to slide it in here and I'll just measure up my little score mark here and my little tick mark there. And I'm just going to cut that away. So I'm going to throw that away and then I'm going to do this to the other side. So I'm going to, I'm going to just lift this up. And again, take it from that little tick mark to that first score line and cut that away. So I have a nice little point there and that will actually be covered so you don't even have to erase it. This is really bothering me where I chipped that nail. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we'll have this. Um, I do need a piece for the inside here which I just moved somewhere. Where did I move it to? Oh, well, did I move it with everything else? I messed up. All right, let's just go back to my little bin here. I'm sure I have another one. Why is that already stamped? Wait, wait, wait. Where did I go with it? There it is. When I moved all my extra pieces, I put it out of the way. Oh. Okay. So I need a piece that's on the inside. I need it at four by five and a quarter. So let's get my five and a quarter here. Standard inside for a standard card. Oh, I know why I don't want to do that, but okay. Okay, now I have my base here. I have a piece of designer series paper. Again, that's from that same paper pack that we're using. Um, and this measures four by five and a quarter. That is actually my inner layer. So we use that on a different card. And then I have a couple other pieces in here. So I've got two pieces, and these measure... Um, four inches by three inches so they're going to go right here so I have one right here right here and then in the front so let's go ahead here I've had and here everything down 
So right now, pretty simple ones. I thought we'd start with simple and then kind of progress each week. And none of them are like I said are actually very hard. Once you do them once, you're like, oh yeah, I get it now, no problem. So that is why I thought sending you a sample of it so you can actually see how it folds and you know touch and feel and move. It just makes it a little easier because sometimes just reading directions or watching a video, you don't always get the sense of how it was actually done. All right. Okay, now put this right on the front here, just like that. All right, I've got two pieces of basic white. These measure two and three quarters by two and three quarters, just a square. And it's going to be, one is going to be on the inside here and one is going to be on my outside here. Oh, and I guess that does show. So let me grab my... Oh, no. It, it won't show. I was like, why is this showing? It shouldn't show. We're going to be folding that over. That's why it doesn't show. Now, I don't want to seal it down, but I do want to fold it over. And I'm just taking my bone folder here. I've got some, a little bit of rough edges. So I just want to get those smoothed out. And then I really want to press down on this. All right. So now I've got this. Next thing I'm going to do. All right, so I've got my square. I'm going to pretty much line it up right there. And this other one is going to go here. But we need to do our stamping first. So we'll do that. And I've already gone ahead and stamped some of these. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I stamped. And then you'll see the coloring afterwards since the video is not really focusing on the coloring of it because it took a little bit longer to do all these so i stamped from the taco fiesta isn't this the most freaking cute set ever okay i'm gonna grab just my scrap piece here oh there's this piece right here so i've got my little cactus i've got my little sombrero And I need to have my nacho chips. I need my guacamole bowl. And I need an avocado. Oh, you know what? We're going to stamp that separate. Because I'm going to stamp it right on that one. On this one, we're going to actually cut these out and pop them up. So all I'll do then is, you know what? I can actually save myself a little space on my paper here and I'll just stamp them okay then I'll end up coloring them and cutting them out and by the magic of TV I've gotten that all done ahead of time there we go. Aren't those cute? I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. Okay. There we go. So just our cute little things there. Now we could put a little smiley face on him. <coughs> and there is a little smiley face in here. So we've got this little face. So we'll go ahead and grab that little face here. And um, let's see here. I'm just debating on which one I want. Um, what did I do for my card? <laughs> I'm like, I put it on there and I don't remember what I did. Oh, I know what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> I had some fun with this. I was, um, playing around and I cracked myself up when I was doing something. So we're going to go ahead and put his little face on. Just need to grab my block. So he's got a little smiley face here. So we'll stamp that right on the cactus. There we go. Nice, cute little smiley face, right? Just wait. Because I do need to color one. And I'll bring this back in. <clears throat> because on the inside, he's going to have a different face. So let's go ahead and grab our granny apple green here. And that's what I used for these. So I started with my dark granny apple green. And I just really kind of did the base of the cactus here, kind of right in here, right in here a little bit. 
And then came in with my light and I started at the bottom and I just kind of pulled some of that color up. I really wanted that to blend in. And then as I go to the top, it's going to be lighter. So again, pulling the dark into the white area there. Here we go. Okay. So now you can see that it blended in. All right, we'll cut this one out real quick. And I realize that the other two, I still have to stamp on my other cards. So let's just get him cut out real quick. I mean, this little image is, is pretty easy and fast to cut out. And you don't have to get really close to lines because it's going to be in white anyways. Right. So I don't know why I really cut this one out, but I did. All right, let's grab our other square here. And I need to stamp my little guacamole bowl. So let's get that out. My little guac bowl. I'm going to stamp that first. So I know that I'm going to put him here. And <clears throat> I'm going to stamp that right next to him. Right there. And we're going to grab another one of these here. I had these cut out earlier because we want to actually pop one of these in the dip. So I'm just going to cut out one. Doo -doo. So again, I think the next uh, set of ones, we're just really going to focus again more on the fun fold than the stamping. So I'll have a lot of this done. We're just going to tuck that in there. I want to give this some color, so I'm going to just bring in my Granny Apple Green again. And we'll just color this in to just be guacamole. And I'm going to bring in my sweet sorbet and color in my bowl here. Okay, which is my this side here. And I've got my light here. I'll come back in with my dark in just a minute. So you can start with your light or your dark. It does not matter. It's your kind of your own preference. Play around with it. See how you like it. All right. So I've got the light in there. And I'll come back in with the dark. Where did the dark one go? That's not the dark. Oh, it's right here next to Oh, I did start with the dark. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, I really should have started with my light. I only wanted to accent some of the areas. So, I'll just come in. Do that. And we'll come back in again with the dark and just kind of do the bottom of the bowl. Do little legs on the bowl. There we go. Okay. All right. We're going to take our little chippy here. I'm going to just round my corners just a little bit better here. Take a little speck of glue. Put our chip right in our guac. Put that right there. Let's just glue him down right away. So he lost his nachos. He lost his sombrero. What is a cactus going to do? And I'm going to grab another little face. And this time, there is a little face in here that looks like that. So we're going to stamp that little face. So I just need to make sure I grab the right one. Put in the corner here. And we're going to also stamp long time no taco. All right, where'd it go? Long time no taco. Let's 
I'm going to stamp that right in black as well. Right across the top there. Okay, let's get to assembling the rest of the card. So bringing back in our card front here. We've got our inside done. And we've got our front here. What the heck did I get on there? All right. So, again, when I put this on, I'm not going to adhere this one yet. I do want to adhere this one. And I'm just going to put everything right on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting my adhesive on this piece. So let's open this up. Let's grab our adhesive. And I could use liquid glue or I could use my seal. I'm going to go ahead and use liquid glue just to make it a little easier on myself in case I have to adjust this. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to pull this piece in here. I'm just going to layer it on there, just like that. Kind of make those points kind of meet the edge there. Here we go. Points meet the edge there and there. All right, give it a little press. Now, we're going to open up the inside of the card. And we. this is why I didn't put adhesive on the back. I'll zoom back out again. Because I want this to be able to flap like that. Now, what I'll do is on this one, before I adhere it, I kind of just want to go make sure that it's hidden, okay? So what I can do here, I can actually just flip this over, lift it up, kind of get it lined up right there, and I can put my liquid glue down. All right. And while it's balanced there, I can just go ahead and close this. Give it a nice little a nice little back rub here. Flip it over, and there we go. And then I'll just give it another little press. All right. So just a cute little secret message. You don't even know it's there until they open the card. Okay, let's get our front decorated now. I'm just going to put that right there so I can keep it down so we've got our little nacho I just thought this was really cute when I was doing this I'm like it was I was cracking myself up my husband and son just look at me some days because I was doing this down in my kitchen yesterday or not yesterday um Monday so they they just look at me sometimes and just roll their eyes I have a lot of fun when I'm stamping just saying I crack myself up I'm hoping that some days I crack you up Today was a little bit of a rough start, but we'll we'll make up for it soon. All right. So I've got my little cacti right here. We're going to make him a little cocky by throwing his hat off to the side. All right. Just like that. And we're going to stamp on here. Uh, we're not going to stamp. We're going to throw our... Our uh, nachos up in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and put liquid glue on the back of those to keep those down. Maybe I'm going to use liquid glue. <laughs> so I'm just going to get both of them done right here. All right. So he's tossing them up in the air, all excited that he's juggling his nachos. And if I feel like I need another nacho or two, I can just take the one I have here and I can trim that down. And let's just push it down a little bit. We'll get one last nacho out. Do, 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 do. So this is a pretty easy fun pull. Again, in the card kit, so when I use my next envelope, I'll show you exactly what I include in your little envelopes. You'll definitely like this. This is a fun class, and um, you can get all the pieces for when you purchase $35 at my online store using the host code that I had on the email and also on the link in the description. I'll make sure that that is in the Facebook description as well as on a Facebook post. And there'll be another email going out tomorrow about it, so that way you have that information. Just a little 
Hey, did you catch last night's video? All right. Now we need a little sentiment here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring back in my little strip here. And we're going to do the your nacho, your, your nacho average friend. I keep forgetting to put my stamp set over there. Okay. Just a fun little greeting here. We'll take our little faces back off. Put the little faces away before I lose those. Put the little guacamole bowl back before I lose that. And just stamp it in black. Clean those up. We'll get those put away and then I just want to make sure I have everything put away. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, got all my pieces put away. Put my stamp back in its case. I'm going to go ahead and take this. And I'm just going to actually put this right up on top. So I'm just going to trim it straight. Just like that. And let's grab a couple embellishments here. We'll use the milky dots. And I'm going to go ahead and use the in there. In here. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Okay. Quick and easy. All right. So that's not too bad, right? This is a pretty easy one, too. Okay. Just a, just something fun, just something a little different. Um, it's more interactive. Doot, so doot, 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 doot. When you open this, doot, doot, make the sound. Because <laughs> it will make you smile. So when you make your card, you're going to think of doot, 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 doot. <laughs> it's going to make you smile, I'm telling you. Okay, get some of this put away, and let's get to our next fun fold here. Make sure I don't lose my dies. All right, next fun fold. So here was, again, my original sample. And then our little nacho friend. All right, so let's put that one right here. And our third one tonight, I'm going to show you the finished card. This one has a belly band. We're going to do our other one just a tad different. So we have our little belly band, and then we have our little card. So that one's going to open like that. So just a little bit of scoring, not anything too bad. Uh, like I said, we're not going to do the belly band on this one. We're going to take our, oh, I wanted to show you the flyer for the, uh, the sale. So uh, Celebration, they've got a second wave of release products. Um, I had actually no idea that they were doing this, so I'm super excited because these are awesome. So there is two different kits that they're actually going to give free. So when you purchase $50 at my online store, you're going to get those kits free. So if you do a $50 purchase with my host code, not only do you get that, but you're going to get the cards, the little uh, sample, and the instructions on how to do all these fun folds. They have another one that has two spools of ribbon, an embossing folder, some of the punches, um, and then this designer series paper, which we're actually using on this next card. So hence the reason why I was pulling that out. So this designer series paper is in our mini catalog and you can purchase it. But I'm going to tell you, if you spend $50, you'll get it for free. But make sure you use this code here. If you put the code for this in there, it is not going to come up as a free item and you're going to end up paying for it. So make sure you use the right code. But let me share this paper with you because it is awesome. So it's the um, Enjoy the Journey paper. It goes with like the Adventurous Journey uh, stamp set. Which, you know, I thought of, but uh, I didn't end up getting just because I already had enough 
purchased that I didn't want to get more. So on here, it's really pretty. So you've got your purples and your greens. On the other side, you've got a geometric pattern. You get two of each sheet. And then you have uh, some of the evergreens here. We're going to be using actually this piece uh, in our next card. You have this wave and clouds kind of paper. It has a fun dimension on the back. And then the last piece here, let me pull this one out, is this. Oh, there's two more pieces. Okay. So on one half, you've got mossy meadow. On the other half, you've got uh, uh, polished pink. Now, if you were to cut this down, you could, you know, just uh, cut this at five and a quarter. And then by four, you can make three awesome cards. I actually get six cards out of here. And I don't know why I'm so close. Some days I'm really close when I'm doing videos. Other days, not so much. I don't know. And then uh, the last piece. And then the back is that. Last piece, again, is the purple and the greens. I really like this. Again, you can cut it at five and a quarter. And then by four, you can get six cards. You'll have a little extra strip here to put on the inside of your card. So, yeah, just some really pretty paper. I really do like Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper. I, uh, a long, long time ago, not only because I'm a demonstrator, but a long time ago, I stopped buying um, pattern paper in the stores. Because, you know what, it's always one-sided, and I like the two-sided paper, because that way I have a choice. Um, but it just wasn't as nice. This paper is really nice. Okay, so now this one I do need to look at my screen over here to make sure I get my dimensions right. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. This is the one that we're going to score at one and a quarter inch. So I'll go to one and a quarter. And then I'm going to four and a quarter. Right. I'm going to fold this one this way and this one this way. All right. Now, my original card was facing this direction. I'm going to turn it to be this direction. So let me grab in my little board here. I want to give myself some really nice creases here. Really important. All right, there we go. Because that way it sits flat. All right, so we're going to be turning it this way. I have a piece of designer series paper. So I've cut two pieces out and they both measure um, two and three quarters. So two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So you decide which you want where. I'm going to put one on the outside here and I have one on the inside. I have two strips now that are from the other side of that designer series paper. So there we go. <laughs> and these measure, um, so I switched my things up. These are one inch by four and five and a quarter, right? So they're going to go right on here, just like that. And I just need to change my little direction here. Okay, so let's go ahead and here are pieces together. So on this one, and also when you're doing a fun fold, it is really important to use a glue that's going to really hold. Okay, so I've got that one right there. This one, I'm going to slide out for right now. I'm going to put along the side here. Again, you can have this go vertical or horizontal. My first one was vertical. This one's going to be horizontal. All right, I'm going to put that right here. Now, what I like to do is I usually like to kind of close it to make sure that my top and bottom is kind of the same position. All right. And I'll flip this one open. I'm going to take, choose whichever piece of paper that you like best. All right. I do like this one. So we're going to take that. Make sure I get my little corners here because I nothing worse to me than when my card pops apart. All right, we'll open this up here and I'll set this right in here. Now, before I press down too hard, I can flip this down and make sure, oh, do I have my 
sides lined up, but I do. So just slide that in there like that. On this one, we'll open it up here. And again, put our glue on. It's almost time for a new glue. I wonder how many I actually go through in a month. I don't pay attention. I just, because I order quite a bit and I have it available on hand because when I do classes, if people run out, then they can purchase it. All right, and this one I'm going to put right in here, just like that. All right. Now, I have a piece of basic white, and this also measures two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I'm going to put that right on here. And you know what? I'm going to hold off for just a minute because I need to stamp on that. So I like to stamp my sentiment and everything else before I actually put it inside my card. Because, you know, there's nothing worse than having to peel that baby apart. All right. I have a stylish shape circle. So I'm going to put that right in the front like that. All right. Now, to hold my front down, I can either, I can adhere that down or I'm going to leave it popped up because I want it to kind of be a opener. Okay. And because I'm going to do that, I actually also want to have another circle. Um be underneath that. So let's see what other circles I have in here. Oh, that's an oval. That's not going to work. Okay. I need to cut one more circle. And the only reason I thought of that now is because if I do leave this so that they're opening this up, I suppose that doesn't matter. Um, what can happen is I could rip that off, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I like, we're just going to go with it just like it is, but I do need some other dimensionals. Now, I just, I pulled out a new one today, and I don't know where I put it. So just give me a moment to find it. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. You know, because you can never find them when you're doing this. Here we go. All right, I guess we'll have to use those. Okay. So now let's get some things stamped. So I'm going to pull back in the same stamp set that I use, and I use the um, Happier been happy which is this one here i just thought it was kind of a nice little set to go with um the kind of the foresty background here and we're going to go ahead and stamp our um we're going to stamp our do we want to use our bear or do we want to use the owl i think we're going to use the owl on my original card i said i stamped the bear i think we'll change it up a little bit we're going to stamp our tree trunk. And then we're going to stamp our owl on top of that. We'll have a little bit of grass here. All right. And you know what? For grins and giggles, we're going to add a little mushroom. Okay. So let's grab some of our ink. I'm going to grab garden green here. And we'll do our grass area first. I'm going to grab just something to put underneath when I'm stamping. I don't get it all over my work surface here. Just grab that one. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp this right along the bottom. For a minute there, I thought that was shaded spruce. That's garden green. Okay, so I just stamped a little bit of background there. All right, All right. I need to get that clean. All right, that's done. Let's go ahead and bring in our stump here. And we're going to stamp that using our soft suede. Ink that up. Just stamp it right. <laughs> I've got stamps everywhere. Right on there. Okay, next I want to stamp my owl. And I'm going to do my owl in soft suede as well, but this time I'm going to stamp it off. We're going to see how it looks stamped off. So I am actually going to just take a scrap here because I want to see how dark it's going to be. Oh, I like that. Okay. 
so now that I know I can stamp it off, <clears throat> we're going to put him right on top of I just thought this was a fun masculine card, but kind of more of a whimsical one. And we're going to put a little, got a little, that one, and we're going to do the other one too. So I end up doing one of each, and I'll just use two different blocks. All right. I'm going to do this in, um, I'm going to do it in crumb cake. Again, keeping a very masculine tone with this card. So I'll put one right here. And we'll take this other one. And I'll put one right here. And we'll take our large one again and just put it over here. All right. There we go. Get those two clean and now let's grab a sentiment and I'm just going to stamp thanks oh my gosh okay not only is my house staticky but my stamps are sticking everywhere to me it's like I, I move and my stamps are stuck okay we're gonna do this in turn of green And I'm just going to stamp it off to the side here. All right. Maybe you had someone come over and repair your roof or fix your plumbing or got your heater working again, your furnace all set. I want to send them a little thank you card. Okay, maybe they filled your gas tank for you. Hey, yeah, I tell you, that's one of those things I really do appreciate. So now what I'm doing is I don't want to put... My dimensionals here or here. I just want them really on this strip. So I will actually just take this piece here and I'm going to put it right on the center just like that. So that way when I put this down, it is centered right where I need it to be. Just like that. I feel like I need a little something, but I don't know what yet. Um... We'll add some of the milky dots, I think, to it. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that right away. So these are kind of like a pinkish purple, but I think they're going to go just fine on that. I'll grab a handy day, take a pick tool here. And put one there. Oh, stick. I'll put it over here. Okay, so now that is really our cards. We just need to stamp a sentiment on the inside, and there we go. That is our fun fold card. So now when they open it, they just do this. Okay, so let's see. I put thanks on there. Let's see what other sentiment I have for the inside here. I've got sending support, and yep, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. And I think we'll stamp, may the good you do come back to you. I think that's kind of a cute little sentiment. So we'll get that one done. We'll stamp it right over here. So on this one, instead of stamping it right in the middle, again, we're going to stamp it off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and use my garden green. That way you can leave a little note. Now, if you really wanted a little secret here, you could actually just put adhesive along the sides and make this a little, um, sorry, a little adhesive on the side and on the bottom and make it a little gift card holder. So that way you could put a little gift card in there. All right. So let's go ahead. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and adhere it down and we'll kind of leave it as a little gift card holder. So it's a fun full gift card holder. Yep. That's a mouthful. I don't really have names for these things. So if I do, I'll share that with you. But I don't usually have a name for these. Okay. Now, do I have a handy dandy little gift card? 
Oh, probably not. Uh, let's see if I have a little business card here. I should have one. So, I can stick my little gift card right in there. You can either tuck it in like that. You can tuck it in this way. I'm just going to tuck it in just so they see the little top. And there we go. That is your card. So let me bring in the three cards that we did tonight for our Fun Fold Friday. So this is our first one. This is a gate fold. It just kind of opens up to off one side. And then we did our little natural friend. Fun. And then our little thank you. All right, so those are our three cards tonight. Hope you like them. Again, um, place an order in my online. I might. Uh, bleh, 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 bleh. Let's try it again. Place an order in my online store for thirty-five dollars using the host code that's in the description and in the comments of the video, um, and you will receive this class kit for free as my gift to you. And also, you will get the step-by-step -step instructions. And again, I take pictures. Um, I let you know exactly how to place things. So the, you're not going to get just this picture. When I do the pictures, I'm going to show you open, close, if there are certain things that you need to do. There's multiple pictures with it. So the tutorial is a little bit longer than my normal ones because I usually just do the card, you know, the front of the card. But this one, you're going to see all the different steps. All right. And in addition to your uh, three cards that you get, you're going to, um, I think this week we're going to try and see how it works with having a sample of the um, fun fold in there for you to keep um, now I gotta tell you I'm not going to be doing the stamping for you I can't so when I send it to you your sample is just going to be pieces that are together um, you know what? I don't like that idea never mind I am going to send you uh, in your card kits two of each card so you'll have six cards to make um, I don't want to get in trouble by policy, so I don't think it would be good if I just send it without the instructions, without the stamping. Stamping makes it right. Okay, so $35 will get you um, the kit to make six cards, two of each design. You'll still get the PDF. It will be very detailed. It will have all the supplies I use. It will have step-by-step -step instructions. It will have your measurements, everything that you need that gets sent to you via email. So take care. Have an awesome weekend. I hope you enjoyed this. And our next Fun Fold Friday will be February 17th. All right. Take care.